Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. Um, this video is January 2018. It's regarding the arc uh, welders, spot welders for an auto body shop. Um, I couldn't finish the video there just because of the noise and I know you guys said it's getting gets kind of loud. Um, I also turned off my headset. I think that might have been causing an issue for you guys. Um, I think it cuts in and out. That's a couple issues on the video, but I'll try to do the best I can. I don't have anybody to help me video this while my wife is driving here. So um, first of all, I wanted to talk to you real quick. If you guys remember my other videos about Polaris connectors or Ilsco lugs, these I do not like as far as blue wire caps. Uh, they are about a 20, 40 degree Celsius rating. They are the first things to melt always. Um, as soon as I put on those rubber Polaris caps, I did three ports because these welders had two uh, double tap for two separate welders um, on the same circuit. I found an increase on the connection point. So he brought me over there and I wish I could have showed you, but on his machine for the spot weld, it actually showed that it increased his weld from a 90% to a 99% value. So it was increasing um, the function of it as well as um, how well the machine, the smart machine was telling him that you were spot welding correctly. So hopefully I was saying that correctly, but um, we did see an increase. And that's because of the fact that, again, the three pole breaker and the 50 amp square D stab was showing you, um, I showed you guys that the wires were loose, especially in the B phase. And when that was loose, that makes the voltages in, inconsistent going to um, the machine itself. And so we also saw on the back side of that, that the amperage from A, B, and C, once his machine was kicking on, um, was running anywhere from 190 to 253 to 117 to 120 on B on C phase But B phase was 253 at one point caught on my inrush fluke meter that I've showed you guys in the past as well um, so on all of that what we're trying to explain to you guys is that if your Connections are loose based on those wire caps as well as based upon the fact that you had that on the breaker you're gonna see that um, your current's gonna spike. So if your voltage goes down, your current's gonna go up. If something is loose, that is gonna create heat. And that heat is based on the fact that the connections are not consistent. So a lot of you guys say that this doesn't include pressure. Well, if anything is loose, it's gonna create an issue. So if you don't wanna use the word pressure, use it as voltage. But the voltage is inconsistent, the current is gonna spike. And I um, also, did a, a voltage drop calculation on that. And I wanna show you guys that. I've got, I don't wanna to be too, more, too long in these videos here. First of all, we're in article 630. Okay, I'm in the NFPA 70 2017 handbook. So that's page 849. It talks about here on individual welders as well as group welders. I had two welders and the group welder was gonna be off of 630.11a at 100% for these welders and 85% for more than three and 70% for more than four and 60% past that. It talks about it right over here, your duty cycle. These arc welders, spot welders, did not have a duty cycle symbol on the um, machine itself. So it's definitely not just a typical arc welder. Um, it's not gonna be a resistive welder. It is also not a motor welder. So it also talks about here for your arc welders, supply conductors, all the way over here to your resistive welders. Okay, your duty cycle as well. We had no duty cycle on there that I could see, so I'm assuming that would be at 100% if we did. For instance, a 63%, a 40% 40 duty cycle at 63% would show you through 63 amps. It's just basically a duration of what that impacity can be on that conductor. We also looked on 310.16, or 15, excuse me, We saw right here that they originally ran an eight gauge wire. That is only rated at 55 amps. But actually the duration point is gonna be at six degrees Celsius because of article 110.14C and I'll show you that here in a minute. But we repolled in a short area of just new six gauge THW and dash two rating at 75 degrees Celsius column. Uh, we did not have to worry about a continuous duty on this. We did not have to worry about our neutral being different size because it's a three phase four wire, no neutral. And we did have to look at how many current carrying conductors because one raceway was going across the building at 140 foot. 
and it did have three current carrying conductors, so that doesn't really count either. As far as how many current carrying conductors in a conduit, we didn't have them together. They were one off of one part of the panel and the other one nippled through to the other side. Again, we did not wire any of this that you saw in the video. It was just based on what we had to do to repair the, um, the melted wire that was inside of the box that had arced. Um, the other thing you had to look at your ambient temperature factor. We didn't have to worry about that because that's consistent in that shop at about 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So the only other thing we should really be looking at is Article 110.14. talks about your temperature limitations, page 36. Anything that's going to be 60 degrees Celsius so is going to be rated because of the fact we have 14 gauge to a number 1 gauge. We were dealing with six gauge. So basically that wire in 31015 is really only good for that 55 amps to 60. Um, bottom line, you're gonna be fine with that arc welder. The most I saw that throwing out as far as consistently um, is gonna be at that 60 amps because the nameplate said rated up to 60 amps for its conductor size. So again, look at your nameplate on that. My video is at six minutes. I'll do a third video, thanks.